Welcome to the Shop Forming Garage. Today we are working on this 2012 Kia Soul. We're going to replace the clutch. Yeah, it's got a manual transmission. And uh, there's actually nothing really wrong with the clutch, uh, but the vehicle has 155,000 miles on it, and the customer would like to replace the clutch as a preventive maintenance type thing because um, he feels that he's gone a lot of miles on this clutch and he thinks you know it might go out it's not slipping it uh, is not juddering or anything like that when you're driving it uh, goes into gear perfectly fine but just for preventive maintenance and uh, for to uh, make sure that he doesn't break down or something you know by chance or whatever he just wants to go ahead and replace the clutch so we're going to get into this and uh, we should be able to knock this thing out pretty quick so let's get it done So the first thing we need to do is get this suspension off and we're going to have to drop this suffering down. So uh, we need to get these bolts out, get these cross bolts out, get the tie rod in loose and uh, also get the uh, end links off uh, along with this center dog bone mount has to come off of there so we can drop the suffering down. These tie rod ends, uh, to get them off, you just smack them with a hammer and they'll come loose. Yeah, just make sure that you're not smacking the tie rod itself, but in this case, we're hitting the knuckle right where the tie rod is attached and um, they'll pop. Uh, you want to make sure that you get all that uh, tie rod in loose and all that stuff done first before you do this step. In this step, we need to take this intermediate shaft loose. We need to take the intermediate shaft off and you want to make sure that you have everything else off first. Uh, right now, I'm just marking the intermediate shaft where it's at. It already has some factory markings there, but I always like to put my own markings. And you want to make sure that uh, you have the tie rod ends especially off first before you do this, because if you take this off and then start smacking those tie rod ends with a hammer, uh, it's going to move the rack. And uh, then when you put everything back together, it's not going to want to line up. So. Uh, right now, we're just pulling the uh, intermediate shaft off, and I do have the steering wheel uh, held in place with a steering wheel holder, so that can't move either. And you definitely don't want the steering wheel spinning because you can uh, you can ruin your clock spring, and uh, then you got an airbag light on and all kinds of other stuff. So you just uh, pull this uh, intermediate shaft off once you uh, get that bolt loose. You 
You can remove this transmission without pulling the subframe out, but it's just a fight, you know, to get it out um, because the subframe is in the way and you gotta kind of move the entire engine over to get the transmission out. And then of course you gotta move the engine over and hold it there and put the transmission back in and you gotta stab that transmission in. And it's a manual transmission. So yeah, it's just a fight. It's just easier just to get the subframe out. So uh, we're gonna pull the subframe out now. So what I'm going to use to drop the subframe on, this is a uh, transmission jack. It's a two-stage transmission jack, but I call it the subframe jack because uh, the second stage of this transmission jack is uh, messed up and it won't lift any higher than what you see there. So uh, it's easier just to bring the vehicle down to the subframe jack and uh, just loosen the whole subframe and uh, lift the vehicle off of it. drain the transmission fluid because we're gonna have to pull the axles out and if we don't drain the transmission fluid now when we pull the axles out we're just gonna have the fluid uh, dripping all over the place uh, so um, now we can uh, pull the axles out and we don't have to worry about uh, transmission fluid uh, dripping everywhere Right there, we're just pulling the slave cylinder out and the mount, the ground for the, um, on the transmission there. Now this battery was in really good condition. It was like practically brand new, but there was a lot of corrosion underneath this uh, battery and this battery tray, uh, probably from a previous battery. And that uh, corrosion powder that's in there, you definitely don't want to breathe that in. That is some nasty stuff. It will do some nasty stuff to your mucous membrane and you breathe that in you will be feeling it you know all day you know if not for days and uh, it turns out that uh, the corrosion had actually leaked underneath that uh, battery tray and it got into the linkage the uh the shift linkage and i'm actually having a problem with one of the linkages trying to get it off and i never really got it off like half of the the linkage stayed on, but I was able to get it separated.
it's important that we loosen a couple things like this uh, hose from the brake booster and those bolts that went onto the coolant uh, ho uh, upper radiator hose because we're going to be dropping this uh, back part of the uh, engine and transmission down so we don't want those things to pull out and cause some kind of leaks or something or just do damage to other components. You can see how I'm fighting with this clip, trying to get this clip off of the brake line, or it's it's actually the clutch line, and uh, that corrosion is de definitely taking its toll on uh, some of the parts that are on top of this transmission. Now I'm going to put the uh, floor jack underneath the transmission and hold it up while I disconnect the the mount bolt and then I will just uh, use a, the floor jack to let it down a little bit and then I'll lift the vehicle up and um, it'll be hanging down. Got a couple more bolts to take off and I will pull this off and we'll take a look at it. Let me get a pry bar. Okay. Well, come on. Okay, there it is. And that does not look bad at all. It's like not at all. Uh, we don't have to do anything with this flywheel. We'll just clean it up and it'll be good okay let's look at this so here is the clutch that we just pulled out and it's got some hot spots on here no big deal it's perfectly normal and we can see the wear on here and it is not bad it's not bad at all for 155,000 miles it's really really not bad and here's the release bearing seems pretty smooth now compare that to this is a clutch that I took out uh, like about a week ago this is uh, from a 2019 Kia Soul with 39,000 miles 39,000 miles 
So look at this. It's completely gone on this side. All the clutch material on this side is completely gone. No padding at all. And of course that padding is stuck up in here into the in the clutch plate and it's all stuck up in there and it completely wore out compared to this 155,000 miles and there's still quite a bit of material on there and I mean if you see that it doesn't look like there's much on there right but oh, let's compare this and here's the inside I need to clean this up and here's the the fork that uh, I'll clean that up and I'll just uh, lubricate this pivot right here and uh, lubricate around here and uh, get the new release bearing on but here's the new clutch right here so if you compare this with absolutely nowhere to the one with 155,000 miles that they did pretty good this is the brand new clutch plate which I'll have to uh, spray this down with brake clean because it has uh, some uh, shipping oils and stuff like that on it. But yeah, not bad, not bad at all for 155,000 miles. So uh, I'm gonna get this uh, transmission cleaned up here and um, get the uh, new clutch plate and disc on, and I'll show you how I can. Uh, this does not have a pilot bearing or pilot bushing or anything like that. If you look at the end of the shaft, it does not go into the back of the crankshaft at all. Yet, whenever we hook the clutch, put the clutch plate on the clutch disc, that still has to be centered. And I will show you how we can center this thing without using a, 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 a tool to uh, keep it centered. Um, and uh, it's it's actually it's pretty easy, pretty simple. You could use it pretty much on any clutch. I'm not about I'm not sure about those uh, dual double clutch. Uh, you know th those are completely different. You probably want to use some kind of a pilot tool or something like that. But just for something simple like this single clutch, I'll show you how you can uh, get that centered without using that pilot tool if you don't have one. You know, of course, if you have one, then you use it. You know, it's easy. Uh, but I'll show you an easy way. You can do it if you don't have that. And uh, let me get this thing uh, cleaned up and uh, I'll, I'll show that to you right now. All right, I got the new clutch disc in there and the new clutch plate and I only have two bolts. I got one up here and one right here and they're just barely hand tight, okay? The clutch, it's, you can see that it's loose in there, right? Kind of falling. So this is how I'm gonna center it. I mean, I could get my head up here and, and eyeball it. I mean, that's one way, but on the sides right here, let me show this to you right here this is the clutch plate that's the disc and of course this is a flywheel and i can push this i don't know if you can see that i can push if i can stop moving the camera i can push on that right so if i look down here it's all the way down if we look down and here, and I don't know if you can see that, I can't see it, the disc sh should be further down. So what I'm gonna do is I can reach to each side and see how I can move the disc. So I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna feel how much it's protruding and I'll push on this to keep it from moving. And then I can go up here, feel, it seems like it can come up a little bit more down up there. So I'm gonna push on both sides, just a little bit, kind of move it up, fill it up there, fill it down here, fill it on this side. And whenever it feels to me like it's even, all around, and I can feel the edge of the clutch and the edge of, and I can feel the, the disc. And I feel like there's a ledge there if it feels even, that feels pretty even to me. I'll keep pressure on it and I'll just kind of tighten these down by hand. This top one too, this top one's pretty tight. So there it sits, it sits right there and it feels pretty even to me. And I'll show you what that looks like, if you can even tell. You can see there's a ledge. It's, it's in there a certain way and this is the ledge right here that I'm feeling. 
and I compare this ledge just by feel of my finger on all three sides right there. And if it, uh, if you get it even like that, then it's centered. So that's it. And that's how I do it. And now I'm just going to tighten all these down and uh, we'll put the transmission back in. Okay, I got this thing torqued down, that's centered, and I just want to show you this before I put it back together. I got the new bearing in there, I got uh, the thing greased up around here, I got the pivot greased on the inside, I move the thing back and forth. So, we're ready to put this thing up there, so let's get it in. Pretty much all of this hooked up. Got a uh, new cotter pin in there. I got the cross bolts on both sides. I got all of this put back together. And uh, we had to uh, drain the uh, fluid out of this. I got the um, sleeve cylinder back in and the ground put on. We had to drain fluid out of this, so I gotta put fluid in. So I got this big barrel right here. Got an 8090 weight. It's gonna take about anywhere from a quart and a half to two quarts. So I'm just gonna start pumping this in there until it starts spraying out or dribbling out. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna build up pressure and it's just gonna shoot out. Cause I ain't even got a quart in there yet, and it's already wanting to come out and it's just back pressure just the vent is just too small to deal with this much amount of a fluid at the same time so i got about a quart in there right now so it's okay if i overfill it i'll just let, let it dribble out so it's still not full yet so I got about a quart and a half. And we go to two quarts. Now that's almost two quarts. That's, yeah, it's shooting back. Okay. Well, so that's two quarts right there. Let's see how much it takes. There it is. So it's releasing a lot of pressure. I just, I don't want that to shoot out. Sometimes it'll just shoot out. Okay, so now I'll just let that dribble out. Try to not 
make a mess. And then I'll put this plug back on it. Just something like that. That's, that's good enough. Then we are pretty, pretty much done. Spray this down with brake clean, get all that off of there. Okay, and we'll, I'll let it down. I'll put the tires on. I need to put those, those splash shields back on over there and um, put the tire on and then we'll see Get us started up, see how the clutch works. So, check it out. Okay, I got it down on its wheels, tires. Got my lights are going out now. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's not very bright here. I just got a couple more things to do. Um, just gonna tighten this clamp up right here for this air inlet. And negative battery cable. And that right there. Not fit very well. There it is. Okay. Um, everything's together. So let's go ahead and um, get this start it up see how that clutches and see if the thing moves so do that right now all right let's get in here feels good starts up put it in first yep Friction point seems good. Get it in reverse. No. Reverse. Yep. The shifter is kind of weird. Anyway. Let's take the thing out on the road. See how she performs. All right, let's see, let's see what we can see. Yeah, I mean, the friction point feels perfectly fine. So the clutch, clutch feels good. Shifter is still kind of stiff, but then again, that, uh, that shifter linkage, it uh, uh, was kind of rusted on there. So, it felt, it felt fine before. It felt fine before, but the, um, the uh, customer it really didn't have a problem with the clutch. The customer just wanted to replace it because of the mileage. slippage at all running good just kind of put it through its paces make sure everything's good make sure I'm not getting uh, uh, anything smoking or anything like that just going into all gears I got no slippage six gear Got my foot to the floor, 70 miles an hour, it's good. Got no vibrations or anything. Got a 
she takes a downshift. No problem at all. Seems like, seem like this is good. Everything is good. The shifter is actually getting a little bit better. I went ahead and lubricated it up with some of that uh, rubber care. Right where those uh, rubber clamps went onto that um, that linkage. So, ah, it's good. It's working good. Okay, guys. Uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're still hanging out and watching, thank you very much. I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Uh, stick around uh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.